It's WrestleMania week here on the Wrestling Perspective, and Lars thought we should go old school. Let's go no guest. And by the way, you guys, we got a ton of emails of people that are happy that we don't have a guest this week, Lars. I seriously, when I put it out, I'm like, WrestleMania week, we're going to talk WrestleMania. Send us your emails. 10, 12 emails about from people going, I love the old school podcast. Thank you guys so much for doing this. So Lars Fredericks and Dennis Farrell, we're going to do the email segment. We'll take the break and then we'll go into a little bit of WrestleMania stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I, there's, you know, West WrestleMania week is like historically the busiest week for wrestling. If you think about it, I mean, all in one town. I mean, if you think about how many freaking shows are going on in Los Angeles. It's just insane. Anyways. It you know, uh it's one of the most uh bidded sporting events in in the US, which is huge when you think of, you know, uh the Super Bowl and WrestleMania right, right next to each other. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So if people say wrestling's not mainstream, they're fucking wrong. Yeah. All right. It's a big Let's get some emails. Miguel, longtime listener, love the podcast, longtime fan here. Lars X asks some thoughtful and provoking and intelligent and insightful questions. He's a natural. What do you think would have happened if he never uh, was a guest on the wrestling perspe perspective? Like in another universe, Lars goes into wrestling podcasts without the wrestling perspective. Well, uh, what would happen? Yes. I, I think he's saying in another universe where Lars Fredrickson is not part of the wrestling. See, this is what I, this is what I believe. Okay, in whatever universe that you live in, okay, you eventually gravitate towards the people who you're supposed to gravitate to, anyways. Like you're not going to be able to not meet that person, not do that with that person. I mean, I feel like if we weren't. Dennis and I weren't doing the wrestling perspective in the alternate universe. We'd probably be tag team partners. I like, I like the way you think about that. And I went from, when I was thinking about this question, when I got it, I was thinking about moments, right? I think Ruby Soho would still get her name. I think it would have been a different way. She would have gone into your DNs and asked permission. And then you guys would have worked it out. Uh, I don't think the podcast would be as good because I assume in the alternate universe, PD goes on to the WWE, so he leaves the podcast anyways. So we're so we're talking about now. What is because now I'm confused because the question is in an alternate universe. So I'm thinking Marvel alternate universe, right? And then, but then we're just everything saying changes, if, right? Everything changes. Like what yeah. if? That's kind of what I kind of like. That it's interesting. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, I think I'd probably be doing it with some deadbeat wrestler that probably just had gotten fired. Um, although I've been very lucky with some of the guys in the past who have podcast Lars by far. And we talk about this a lot is, is my favorite. So, well, what's hard, it's hard not to like me. I mean, it is very hard not to brutally honest. No, but, uh, but I, I don't think like the way that the chemistry that we had, the friendship that we share, I just, I, and we're both sort of on the same page with a lot of stuff. So, I mean, I, to me, it's like, I'm stoked. And, and, you know, I like that we both have difference in opinions on things. For sure. And we don't try to talk each other into liking each other's opinion. Like, we respect it. Like, oh, yeah. hey, John Cena, you do. And in an alternate universe, you'd love John Cena. Well, it's not that I don't love John Cena. I just don't. I never. I, he, I wasn't a fan. I just didn't like the whole jean shorts hip-hop thing you know like i that's just not that's not me like that's why i'm a i was a cm punk fan you know it's like but that's the thing it, you know the majority of america at that time were wearing shorts so it's like you know what i mean all right well josh says uh hey lars and dennis big fan i've been a listener since the porn star wrestling question days uh that's way before your time back when pd we didn't even do video that's how best long ago it was. A few months ago when Lars and Punk showed up at the New Japan Pro Wrestling Show, did oh. New Japan know you guys were coming? Was the promotion worried about fans uh, interacting with you guys in the stands and any sort of crowd control coming in advance? Yeah, no one knew that. that uh, Rock, Rocky knew that I was coming and I was bringing a guest, but nobody knew who my guest was. And so I saw a few things on Wrestling News that he had called. No, no. No, it's not the way it went down. The truth of the matter is, because I was there, 
um, is, uh, you know, Rocky before Rocky was on the show. Uh, we were chatting and uh, I think I ran into him. I can't even remember what it was. Told me about the New Japan in San Jose. Uh, whatever it was, I said, I'm, I would like to come. He said, no problem, whatever. And I didn't tell anybody. The, the only three people that knew that Punk was going to be there that I knew about was myself, Punk, and Lou. And that was it. Oh, and Rob Naylor. Yeah. So four. Which was, you know, I enjoyed watching the pictures because I think I found out a little bit beforehand. See, here, here's the thing. Punk is a wrestling fan and he wanted to be there not only because he basically to support Mercedes, you know what I mean? Um, I, he's a big proponent for women's wrestling and I think that he enjoys it. And I also think that, you know, every wrestler, wrestler for the caliber of wrestler that he is, you have to be that caliber of a fan to get there in the first place. It's kind of like me with music. If I didn't love music the way I loved music, I never probably would have ended up where I'm at, right? And that's one of the things that people need to know about success, you know, when it comes to that performance stuff. Not everybody does make it, but that if your love and your passion is, is the core foundation of that. Like you might not even set out to make, you know, become a world champion or a platinum selling record guy or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, I didn't set out to do that. Like I set out to make music because I loved it. I loved it more than life itself. My man became a wrestler because he loved it more than life itself. And so he's still a fan deep at heart. I mean, the, literally the night before, you know, we were at Amoeba Records here in town in San Francisco and he finds a box of wrestling mags and buys them all. And they're from the 60s, late 60s. I think the earliest one was 68. The latest one was 74. And we sat that whole night reading through these magazines you know what i'm saying yes and there was like 40 or 50 of them and some guy obviously maybe had passed away and you know sold his collection or whatever it was and then the next night we're at new japan you know and he's there because he loves wrestling and uh you know it was really it was there was some really cool moments that i'll just keep for myself because they're my personal moments with one of my best friends but no one knew uh, and and I don't unless he reached out to somebody that I don't know about, but you know I was the one that got us the tickets. It was under my name. I wish Punk had the same influence in wrestling you do to get free tickets like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the thing: Rocky and I are, are good friends. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, if he comes and wants to see a rancid show, I've got him. You know, that's just the way shit happens sometimes. Yeah, and Rocky and I are phenomenal acquaintances, so he, he, he occasionally will return my text. No, Rocky's yeah, but, our favorite guest. Yeah, no, I love Rocky. He always brings it, and he always, you know, does something, you know, awesome for us. Yeah, always. Uh, Isaiah from Tacoma wants to know, is there a rivalry that is one of your all-time favorites in all of wrestling? Dusty Rhodes, Four Horsemen. Yeah, I keep going back to that one. Uh Occasionally, I'll say, like, I think rivalries in wrestling, they're like, when someone asks you to name your all-time favorite bands, you can name three, and then, like, four and five will always change between 500 different bands. Yeah. And I think that's the same way between with wrestling rivalries. It's whatever that flavor, because I could say Sting and the Four Horsemen sometimes, because that was always a great one, or Flair and Sting. It, there's just been so many. Hogan Savage. I mean, how do you not love that one? That's got to be right up there. And it gets, it depends on the kind of mood you're in, you're in that day for your favorites. Yeah, it, it's it's very subjective, right? Because that's why, you know, even at the beginning of the show, when we were talking about John Cena, it's all subjective. Like, you know, what you might gravitate towards. Um, but then the Heart Foundation angle, you know, when they all became bad guys, like that was fucking the rivalry. I mean, was it a rivalry, though? Was it like, what was it? I mean, Stone Cold and Bret Hart, those matches put Stone Cold over the edge, you know, like he, that made him a superstar. So I think, you know, there's so many to choose from, really. Yeah, oh, I mean, Stone Cold versus anybody. McMahon and Stone Cold, how do we not put that on the list? It's just so many great... Stone Cold The Rock. 
another great I how do you pick between even five of them there have been so many great ones well and that's the thing I feel like wrestling you know when it's done right when the story is told like with the bloodline here and Cody Rhodes and you know certain things are the stories are told correctly uh Joe Hendry you know like you can see these things that are I mean, it's just exciting to see how it's going to unfold, you know? Uh, I'll say this, and here's another email. This comes from Abby Miller, and we talked about this at the very beginning. Abby says, when I saw the tweet about Lars and Dennis doing the WrestleMania show, I legitimately got excited. As much as I love your questions and your guests, I didn't realize how much I miss listening to you both, both of you guys talk about old school banter. Uh, mm -hmm. about any kind of subject, especially WrestleMania. Please do more shows like this, Abby from Wisconsin. Okay. Well, I mean, Abby, your wish will be our command. I mean, I think for us, it, you know, one of the things that I think that we love to do as wrestling fans is, is, and I've said this a million times before, is, you know, we're a human interest story kind of podcast. Like we want to really know the person, you know, and sometimes they come in like the, the ass boys did and, and, and come in character or MJF did, or, you know, or who, you know, the list goes on, but for us, you know, it's about just having a good time and getting to know somebody. And sometimes I get excited because you can sense when they give you something that they don't give another podcast. And I, and I've learned through you and many other interviews we've done, not every guy comes in here and is willing to open up or give us something. So when a guy comes in here and uh, we'll, we'll drop something and we know it's going to be news, we're not dumb, but and we just kind of will stop, they go and we'll go, holy cow, I can't believe he just said that on our show. And it's like the biggest compliment a wrestler can give any show is when they do something like that. Well, I think also the biggest compliment I can see from a wrestler is when they said they had the, the best time or that's um, that one of the best podcasts that they've ever done. Or, you know, we've heard that a few times and I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back, but she wants us to talk about other shit. So let's quit talking about ourselves. Can, can I just say one thing? I get excited when you get excited when they say this is the best show they do. Like when when we're done and they're like, man, I really had fun. And you can see your face light up like, really? You like, you know, because we're both very confident guys. But, you know, when when these guys come on and they're like, this is the best time I've never had an interview like this. This is great for us. That's our pet on the back. So well, and I and I think, well, yes, absolutely. And I think to, just to end this off and so we can move on is uh I've done millions of interviews myself. I've been interviewed myself on so many different levels. And I feel like the questions that we bring are the questions that I would want to answer or, you know, I would want to play with, let's say. Jackson from uh, Sioux Falls wants to know, I just started rewatching wrestling a few years ago. I'm not a massive women's wrestler fan. Are there any of your favorite wrestlers right now you think I should go check out? There's a few. Um, I'm definitely really interested, you know, not to get into the WrestleMania thing, but the Rhea Ripley Charlotte Flair match. Like, I really feel like this rematch is going to really set the tone of what we're going to see from Rhea Ripley in the future. Um, but I definitely, I feel like those two are consummate professionals. I think uh, Asuka is a consummate professional. I think she's a wonderful wrestler. I think um, Jamie Hayter is a great wrestler. Um, Ruby Soho, obviously. Um, there's a lot. Oh, shit. Uh, I mean, Bailey. I mean, you know, obviously she she put, you know, a lot of ways put the modern women wrestling on the map. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's are there are some I just don't like just because of the style or I just don't connect with them. But I feel like the obvious ones are the obvious ones for a reason. Uh, I would even say go watch what Mickey James is doing right now. Oh, see, th there you go. You know, 100%. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it, especially right now, because we know she's getting towards the end. And the one thing is wrestling fans we don't seem to do is appreciate someone until they're gone. So go appreciate, you know, someone like a Mickey James where she's – whether she wants to admit it or not, I think she's getting close to that real last run in her career. 
Well, I think one of the best matches I've seen women's wise, and if we're just going to, you know, break it since we're talking about it, was Masha Slamovich and Mickey James. That was probably the best women's match I had seen in a couple years, easily. Uh, Besides, like Thunder, Thunder, Thunder Rosa and Britt was the last one that I saw. So it's like, you know, Thunder hasn't really been doing much, unfortunately, but neither really has Britt. But um, yeah. Nikki James, Master Slamovich. I will piggyback off your comment about Asuka and say, if you haven't seen any of her stuff from back in Japan, go watch some of that stuff. Even that NXT run she had, so underrated in all of wrestling for that time period. She was unstoppable there. So, okay. yeah. All right, listen, we're going to call it into the email segment. Feel free to always email us, wrestlingperspective at gmail.com. We will do our best to always get your questions on the show. It's one of our quickly favorite things we do now. I, you know, uh, th- I don't know what took us so long to do it, but now that we're doing it, it's uh, unstoppable. And we thank you guys so much for taking the time to email us. So wrestlingperspective at gmail.com. Email us, get your questions. We want your hot takes. We want your opinions. We want, ask us anything. We're here to answer it. So uh, in just half a second, we'll be right back with WrestleMania week. I'm excited. I'm all giddy. It's like Christmas for us wrestling nerds. So uh, Lars, we'll be right back. All right, we are back, and WrestleMania Week officially kicks off with this podcast Monday morning. We're so excited. Oh, man. Where did you get that at? This is a custom LJN Roddy Piper with an Old Firm Casuals t-shirt. Wow. Somebody made it for me, or got it made for me. That's sexy. No, thank you. Sorry. So so uh, on this back half, at the end of the show, we'll talk about this coming WrestleMania, we won't get predict- predictions because the card's going to change. and It's not all set just yet because you still got Monday Night Raw tonight and SmackDown. We'll go over night one, night two, what we already know. But, Lars, I pulled out some pretty interesting articles we should talk about. Okay. Uh, this week from Yahoo Sports, the 40 best WrestleMania matches ranked. On Yahoo Sports. On Yahoo Sports. I figure this would be a great kickoff to talk about. Then I've got a couple interesting WrestleMania facts that we, I didn't know. I'm not sure if you knew or not. Uh, I'll give you one spoiler alert. Did you know there's only been one cage match in all of WrestleMania history? Uh, I, I guess you're right. Fuck. Yeah. See? Wow. Wow. Yep. Soon yeah, to be two thought... with Hell in the Cell, but yeah, only one WrestleMania cage match. So, huh. well, that, I feel like that's that's pretty. That I mean, yeah, when you think about it, that was it. Wow, yeah. go so, figure. I'm I'm pretty excited now that you you like that one because yeah. uh, we got yeah, a couple yeah. more. So, okay. uh, at number forty, Sting versus Triple H, WrestleMania thirty one. Yeah, the wrong person won on that one. I agree. Uh, 39, and we're going to kind of blow through the ones we don't care about because we're going to spend a lot of time on here and there. Uh, 39, Randy Savage versus Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 5. Yeah, was that 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 was that, was that the Trump one? Yes. Was there, yes. So. That was the jealousy huh. angle. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm vaguely remembering that. WrestleMania 36, Rhea, Rip- Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. I think that's that a, a little bit higher. 100%. Let's see here. What else is there? All let's right. Do, let, let's do their top 10 I want, I'm, or top five or whatever. I want, I'm just kind of curious. All right. I will skip through and give you some notable mentions as right, we go. Right. Okay, uh, okay. 26, Hogan, uh, Hogan Rock. Let's see here. Oh, that was fu- – I mean, that was – see, that's the thing. That, that was one of the loudest reactions I had ever heard in my life. I agree. I mean, it's it's like remembering, you know, I'll I'll if somebody says, "What's the loudest reaction you ever heard?" I'd say Hogan Hogan Rock, easily, no problem. I down. mean, do we even really remember what happened during that match? I mean, I don't, but I know that that pop, that look the other way, that that was such an iconic moment. That moment alone, top 15 for me. Easily, easily. Let's see here. Daniel Bryant, Randy Orton, Dave Batista at uh, 
at 20 overall. Yeah, what it wasn't. I yeah, yeah. 19 Pass. CM Punk Undertaker. I was there. WrestleMania 29. Uh I and the Undertaker just came out, what was it, this week and said he loves punk. I don't he didn't understand where that uh whole he hates CM Punk thing came from, which kind of interesting that that popped up around this time anyway. So yeah, I, I I always saw them, their interactions being very cordial and with respect going both ways. Yeah. Uh, 17, not sure if I agree this high, Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins, WrestleMania 38. Albeit it was a great match. Um, you know, I, I would actually probably rank that one a little higher, to be honest. I like that. Okay, that's interesting. 14, Edge McFoley, WrestleMania 22. That was great. That was great. At number eight overall, here we go, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon. Yeah, I'll give him that for sure. Six. I mean, number one just better be number one. I think I know what number one is, and if it's not, I'd be like completely and utterly surprised. But how about number six? It's Rock Stone Cold, WrestleMania 17. I would put that in top three, honestly. I agree. That I think 17 was the first WrestleMania I watched on pay-per-view with my own money. Because growing up, I don't know what it was like in your house, but I never actually got to watch a WrestleMania. I got to Well, you have to remember, I, I left my house before you left your house. Yes, absolutely. So I, was, I was paying for my own pay-per-views by the time I was 17. Do you remember the first uh, WrestleMania you watched on pay-per-view or live, whichever happened first? Uh, it was WrestleMania 2. No. Was it 1? It was 1 or 2. Okay. Uh, the Number 5, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. Great match. Fucking, oh, wow, what a match. Did Yes. At 4, Hardy's, Edge and Christian, Dudley's. 100 percent. i mean that was that you know that that to me was unbelievable they that was some next level they brought the psychology they brought the physicality everything that they did in that match meant something unlike what we see in wrestling today do you think that match gets the proper respect in the history of all of wrestling that i think it deserves because no we, i agree with you because when we think of moments that changed wrestling that whole ladder match and oh, it just changed the way tag team wrestling was was even back then. No, well, no, that's where I would actually disagree with you. It changed wrestling, not just tag team wrestling. That match in particular, those guys, those teams, you can throw Edge and Christian in there too. That style of wrestling is what we see as the modern day right now. Main difference is is that, like last night, I watched the Omega Viking match, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as it, it was a wonderful put together choreographed high spot fest that I fully one hundred percent enjoyed. Some of it made sense, some of it didn't. Um, and the difference between something like that and then what those guys did is everything made sense. It was, it was a constant build to get to this big thing at the end. You know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's almost now when you're watching matches that are sort of emulating that kind of thing. There's no, there's no build to the finish that it crescendos a few times in the match. So by the end, you're left there with like half a hand job and not the better half. You know what I'm saying? Wrestling blue balls. Hey, so I think you said it best is, you know, when I think of that match, uh, I, I still remember two moves before the big move with, with the Hardys, Dudley, Edge and Christian. You know, and it's not just spot, spot, spot. It's set this up, set that up, and then boom, the you know, the spare off. The, it just 
everything about that match was magical. I mean, go back and watch that match and just watch the pace of it. And it's like, it's insane. It stole the show of the whole. I mean, that's that match stole the show easily. Number two, Savage Steamboat. That's where I would say that's that's the most number. That's the number one match. That's the number one match. Uh, I go, I go back, and I just still watch that match by itself because when you talk about storytelling, I think from a s- storytelling standpoint, not that I've watched every great match in the history of wrestling, but that might be the textbook where you sit someone down and go, "This is the way it should be done." I mean, honestly. That's the number one match WrestleMania has ever had. Let's be honest. There's no other match that I can think of that had the story, the atmosphere, the build, the finish, the uh, the workers, the work. I mean, everything about that. There are both superstars, and that's the one thing that wrestling extremely lacks these days. You think about those cards. Even 10 years ago, it's every single person on that card is a superstar, transcends the world of wrestling. That's not the way it is anymore. It'll come back. So one, one day it'll, it'll be like that again. But if you think about that time where those two guys were, the match that was put together, the story that was told in that ring, the story that was leading up to the story that was told in the ring, it all makes perfect sense. And you are engaged from the mo- from 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 the entrance. You're engaged. There's no way to. T- you're not going to turn it off. It's like a good song on the radio. You don't turn it off. You turn it up. I will say this: when you were talking about all that stuff, the one thing that hit me through that whole thing is, boy, what I wouldn't give now to have Macho Man Randy Savage with the way today's pomp and circumstances with the entrances. Could you imagine? just his entrance with today's application of how that is. I could, but I asked, I honestly don't think it would be respected. Um, I really honestly feel that, you know, culture and um, generations change, you know, and that's why the world changes and it needs to progress and it needs to change. In some ways it needs to progress some, in some ways, ways it needs to stay the same in some ways it needs to, have a second look in wrestling if you were to put a macho man in today's world uh i don't think necessarily that and i'm i'm sure people no no you're wrong but if you think about how much we are subjugated to and inundated with wrestling i don't i i know macho man would be a star but i don't think it would be i i don't think I think it would be taken for granted is what I'm trying to say. I don't think it would be the story that he was able to, I mean, it's, it's different, man. You can't, it's revisionist history, but I just don't think like there's a guy that caliber right now, you know, happening. Um, You can argue with me and you can say I'm stupid or I'm old or whatever. And you can fucking blow me first of all, but like, um, I just don't think there's there's a caliber of a macho man, and, and if we do get it, it's 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 not it's 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 not appreciated the way it should be. I think today's wrestler fan would probably describe his promos as rambly, where we were like um, hook, line, and sinker. And I don't think his in ring work would be appreciated, especially because you don't have the workers today in that ring that you do back then that made him look. Not that he needed to look better, but it just made them both look well, way what, up here. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like there's there's not a caliber that – there's a few, yes. I think like a Daniel Bryan could go with him. CM Punk could go with him. Uh, I think uh, um, obviously Edge could go with him. Um, but, you know, they're all the more older on the, on the the on the tail end, you know, of their careers maybe. You know, a lot of young guys, I don't know. What's the number one? Go ahead. Sorry. And I was going to say, most of those guys you mentioned were right there at the end of his career, which is that, you know, that 
what the gap bridge between this generation of wrestling fans. So I don't think anybody this generation could could make each other look good the way Macho Man and Steamboat did. AJ probably could make make Macho Man look good. I really think that he, AJ could. All right, number one, Bret Hart Stone Cold WrestleMania thirteen. Ooh, okay, so maybe. <laughs> That's a, I was listening to you Whoa. and I'm like, I wonder what your reaction would be when Whoa. I say it. Yeah, I, I, would, I would still have that at two, man. I'd I'm still okay have with that, that too. too. But I mean, it is that, I mean, I mean, that's a good number one. I mean, I, I, you know, to Yahoo, like I'll give it up to him. That, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to look at that, that list another time, but whatever. Uh, the the thing I think would – for me, if I would switch the rankings, and the only reason is when I go back and think of that Stone Cold Bret Hart match, there's only really a couple moments that stick out to me. That Although they were great moments, it was the double turn. It was the blood pouring out. When you think of Savage Steamboat, it was start to finish every moment, hopping in and out of the ring. The the It just – I think from start to finish, Savage – uh, Steamboat was the perfect match where you look back and maybe we're not too, maybe we're not far enough away from uh, Stone Cold and Bret Hart to appreciate it like we are 30 some odd years later with that to give it that kind of history, if that makes sense. Well, I feel like that Steamboat Macho Man match, I mean, I had been watching wrestling for a few years by that time, obviously. And I remember the room and watching it and watching, not only feeling my reaction, but seeing it on everybody else's face. Mm -hmm. It's like a bunch of fans of a, of a, of a football team all getting up because your team scores. It was like that, but it was for both guys. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, people have their winners, but, it didn't even matter at one point for most of that match. It didn't matter who was going to go over. You were happy for just being there. So anyway. All right. Let's go into some uh, WrestleMania facts you may not know. And okay. I'm sure uh, I didn't know most of these, but some of it did jog my memory. We'll start off with uh, Howard Finkel was the guy that created the name WrestleMania. Vince yeah. McMahon wanted to call it Colossal Tussle. Yeah, no, I, I I knew that about Fink. Could could you imagine being excited for Colossal Tussle Week? No. <laughs> uh, WrestleMania 35 was the first WrestleMania to be headlined by women. Yeah, I think I knew that. Yep. Let's see here. Uh, Run DMC provided the WrestleMania first. The iconic rap group was the first act to ever perform at a WrestleMania Outside of the singing of the national anthem, I remember that. Which I still, I mean, that, I didn't know that. Of I, I didn't think that would be a fact. You know, that would be talking about however many years later. But I'm a Run DMC fucking super fan, so yeah, I love Run DMC. Although when I think about it, it also brings me back to that. What was it, Willie? Was it Willie Nelson? Where he had yeah. every single piece of wrestling merch on, like they were just like throw his guitar was like a WrestleMania theme guitar. That was maybe the tackiest moment back then, where you go, well, really? it's Willie Nelson. He, it's Willie Nelson, bro. He was high as fuck. <laughs> um, WrestleMania two, the only WrestleMania that happened on a weekday. It happened on a Monday night. Holy shit! Wow. Monday, April 7th, 1986. Wow. Huh. That's crazy. I, I had no clue. Uh, WrestleMania 28 holds the record for most pay-per-view buys. How many? Uh, let's see here. Um, WrestleMania billed once in a lifetime between The Rock and John Cena saw 1.2 million pay-per-view buys. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage has the record for most WrestleMania wins in a single night. Hmm. WrestleMania 4 featured a 14 man right. tournament for the World Wrestling Federation That's right. Championship. That's right. Yeah. 
Oh my God. See, these are the things that like, you know, you're mentioning and I'm just remembering the card now and I'm replaying it in my head. Cause you know, obviously when you get to, you know, to a certain point, you've forgotten more than you remember, you know? It, same thing. When I read this, I go, Oh, I think I knew. And a lot of this stuff, honestly, I didn't know. So well, let me ask you this. Like, I mean, what do you feel like, you know, we're, we're hitting into WrestleMania week here and there's so many great shows and you know, these are wonderful facts and everything, but is there a match that excites you about the WrestleMania? Upcoming WrestleMania? I don't, I think it's more, more transcends the match, right? When you think of football, you, you may not get together with your friends for week four Raiders, you know, Tampa Bay game, but you would get together for Raiders Tampa true. Bay in Super Bowl. And you, you know what I mean? No, no, yes, I do know what you mean, but I mean it's a shitty example because I'm there for Ra every Raiders game. True. Uh, let me let me rephrase that. Cleveland okay. Tampa Bay game. You wouldn't you wouldn't have your friends come over for guac or dip at 4 p.m. But if it was the Super Bowl, you would. So I view WrestleMania as the one night I can get all my nerdy wrestling fan friends together. We can eat food and watch wrestling and enjoy it. Although it's two nights now, I, you know, I'm sure we'll get into the two night thing here in a second. Uh, let me quickly wrap this up. We got two or three more, and then we'll go into talking about the current WrestleMania. Okay. Most WrestleMania losses, triple H 13 of them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and, uh, most attended at a WrestleMania, it was, uh, Detroit, Michigan, 90, yeah, 93,000. Yep. All right. Uh, now let's get on to this WrestleMania, which I am. Uh, are you excited for this WrestleMania? I'm excited, uh, on a few levels. Um, I love the hall of fame. Um, that's one of my favorite things. I'm super happy to see Ray go in. I can't believe that the great Muda is going in. Um, that's really cool. It's definitely a good, it's a, it's a, it's a rad nod, you know, to a, a Japanese superstar is basically what he was, you know, and he did transcend to American audiences. We all knew about him. Of course, the W's time in WCW. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, these are the things that I get excited for. Um, and I also love the hoopla that goes around it as far as like the other companies, the other promotions going into Los Angeles and doing fun little shows and stuff like that. I love the feeder shows. Those are the best. Uh, was it uh, Power Slams and Pancakes? I think that's a Sammy Callahan put together thing. I If you're going out there, just just Google, you know, uh, independent wrestling shows that weekend. There are shows that start on Wednesday, I think even Tuesday and run till Monday night. So the, there's wrestling shows at like 9 a.m. So enjoy it because this is your time of year now. Uh, yeah. but we've not talked about this and I know it's wrestling and you can't really apply politics, but how do you feel about Ray going in still while he's wrestling? I, uh, well, I just don't, I mean, Shit, man. If there's one guy who deserves that, that I can think of off the top of my head, it's Rey Mysterio. I mean, lifetime of service. <laughs> Absolutely. And he, he, he belongs there. He belongs there. He, and it he, makes perfect sense. It's like it's in his area, San Diego, Los Angeles. Um, you know, they're very close. You know, and you know, as the crow flies, whatever my point is, still Southern California. Um, uh, I think it's it's uh, it's wonderful. I think he should have been there 10 years ago, honestly. I mean, what he's been able to do as a wrestler, as a performer, that's why he's one of my all time favorite wrestlers. I mean, you know, there's not a guy out there that has done what he's done, and not only that, but he's an incredible human being. So um i'm there's no there's no politics with me and anybody who argues that is a fucking moron I and mean, just 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 stop being a moron you know what i mean just stop being a moron uh i i was on the fence only because the dumb traditional part of me where it's like 
and, and hear me out. I know you're shaking your head, but this is this is the only thing I really kept it on, right? The Hall of Fame is a celebration of one's career. How do you celebrate a career that's still going on? Right. And 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 it's not a knock. Ray should be there the day after he retires. And I want Ray there the day after he re- and he should be there when WrestleMania is in San Diego and all that stuff, which they're very close. But I I think when he hangs it up and we miss him and he comes out, then then you really get that emotion of holy fuck, he's a Hall of Famer. This is phenomenal. Not I get to see him Monday night after WrestleMania weekend. And you know, does that it, and this is a dumb question. I know. And I'm a fucking moron. I get it. But 18 times, I remember you just said I'm a fucking moron. But when you know you can see Ray wrestle Monday night after he gets inducted in the Hall of Fame, does it take even just a little bit away from that moment of seeing him cry in his speech? Does that make sense? No. I mean, there's okay. still bands playing that are in the fucking Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, I mean, so the it's... argument is fucking stupid. It's like, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, there's Hall of Fame fucking artists out in the world. And I mean, really, the WWE Hall of Fame, like, let's... It's a marketing tool. I get it. Put it in perspective, people. <laughs> you know, it's like, to me, it's it's an honor. And whether or not you're at the... Now, if he had been wrestling five years... Like Batista, I mean, how long was his career? Like a fucking cup of coffee and a cigarette, you know? And he's in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? Yep, he's like, a, or he's going in this year, I believe. If not last year, I, I, I think he, I, I, I feel like I want to say he went in there, but I mean, what did that guy really ever do? He's I the mean, Terrell right? Davis of of Hall of Famers. I mean, it's like having Kid Rock in your Hall of Fame, right? I mean, <laughs> that's what we're talking about here, ladies and gentlemen. Donald Trump is in your fucking Hall of Fame. And he was so he couldn't be president after he got in. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I and we're talking about the wrestling Hall of Fame. Here's a guy who single handedly changed wrestling in the way that we look at it. Right. He, it's not just, you know, he's an active wrestler, so he shouldn't go in. That's fucking stupid. You know what? That's a dumb argument because what he's done in the last 30 years prior to this moment was the scope of wrestling changed because of him. Right. Mm -hmm. So now because he's a hall of famer, you don't want him to wrestle anymore. And Uh, on the biggest, on the biggest stage, eh, that's stupid. Admittedly, it's a dumb argument. I get it. And I, and, and here's my problem. I mean, wrestling, but not, well, here's the thing. Wrestling fans make the stupidest arguments including myself i'm not i'm you know i'm not immune from that here here, here's my only here's my only issue and it's not with ray it's with my thinking and this is my fault with my thinking is you know i i think football and baseball right those hall of fames although they have a lot of people that do not deserve to be in there you get maybe not spoiled but brainwashed into thinking a guy's career has to be over for him to get into hall of fame yeah, but, but that that's where i'm gonna just yeah but you're it's thinking baseball thinking. you're thinking yes. baseball and football i'm thinking rock and roll i mean wrestling yes it is sports in a sense but it's also entertainment you know so you get what i'm saying it's vaudeville yes. like like performing arts it's it's a you know i won't say that these guys are artists you know, but I'll say that they're they they are in the sense that they have a, an aesthetic, they have a a story to tell, and the good ones do it very well, and they should be rewarded for that. Ray is one of those guys; he belongs in the fucking Hall of Fame. I'm not talking about this shit anymore with you. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, and uh, at least I'm smart enough to know how dumb my argument is. So you gotta give me that much credit. Uh, I mean, I got dumb arguments too, bro. <laughs> stand and deliver by the way is uh what uh that this weekend as well are you gonna watch the nxt stand and deliver no i'm going to watch what i'm the most excited about is impact new japan split show that is what that's i cannot wait 
Yes. That's the, that's the show I want to see. I, I agree. I, it supersedes every other wrestling that's going to be on that week. Straight up. I'm going to be at home. I'm going to order a pizza. I'm going to get so fucking fat. It's going to be wonderful. I, I will say for many years for NXT, a lot of people would say uh, WrestleMania wasn't even the best pay-per-view that weekend because a lot of those NXTs were amazing up, what, three years, four years ago? Those NXT uh, shows that leading into WrestleMania weekend when it was especially one night, those were amazing. You can go back and they still hold up today. I agree 100%. I think NXT, it, like I'll, I'll watch NXT before... I, you know, like a lot of times when I'm watching Raw, Raw, there's there's not that much wrestling on it anymore. And I don't like, I mean, I don't know if you saw last week's Raw. I did. But, I mean, that thing with Logan Paul, I mean, that wasn't the kind of booze that you want. You know, people were booing him, not in the way a wrestling crowd should boo somebody. Yeah. And I, my hat goes off to him because I think, I do think that he's a great performer and he's got a lot of charisma and I think he's super athletic and uh, you know, regardless of all the other bullshit, I don't, I don't even care. I'm not a YouTube guy, YouTuber, but uh, like the way he handled it, I thought was like, wow, he knows. Cause you can feel the difference in the booze. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a pretty that was pretty incredible that was a pretty incredible moment to watch it and to watch how uncomfortable that must have been for everybody but then you know then you brought out seth rollins which and you tried to make it better but that, he annoys me but anyways um that's a whole other trip it's that midwest crowd you know that's the one thing i like about wrestling and uh, that we don't talk enough about or people don't is how different crowds react to different wrestlers in different areas you you right. have to just love how it's it you you don't know who's gonna get what pop some nights. I love Seth Rollins as a wrestler, but there everything else is just ah. so without getting too much into the weeds about the card, like we mm -hmm. said at the top of the show. Two well, we're not making predictions, we're just oh. talking about the matches. Right. Two nights. Are you okay with the two nights? I see, here's the thing. I, I live 400 miles away from Los Angeles and I'm staying the furthest I fucking can from that city during this moment. I mean, it's, it's literally like me and my, one of my best friends, were going to go down there. And the more and more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I'm just not going to go. It's just going to be a shit show, you know, cause there are things that I do want to see, but I don't necessarily know if I, it, it, you know, 16 hours, 25 hours of wrestling. Eh. And the one thing that I would see and be stoked about to and get out of there would be the impact um New Japan stuff. Multiverse. Multiverse. Yeah. Um, but I like the fact that it's over two days. I think it's kind of neat. But I also feel like if it was one day, I'd be stoked about that too. Will they ever go back to one day? I doubt it. Why would you? You're making the two shows, of, you know. The, the I guess what's the way I'm trying to say the profit that they're making on two nights why would you that's free money and you get more wrestlers on the card it's it, I, I don't know why they would and as a wrestling fan I don't think it cheapens the experience anymore matter of fact I kind of like the fact that I'm not watching a four and a half hour pay-per-view one night and then you get tired and you don't even get to see the end of it because you're just, you just don't care. There's so much, I hate to say dumb wrestling, but there's 40 something matches on a WrestleMania card. Some of them last two minutes and you don't care. So I like that. It's cut up into two nights. I do. I do. At the end of the day, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of the quick matches here, what stands out? We've got the Rollins, Logan Paul match. We talked about that for a second. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes. You said you're super excited about that. Yeah. Um, I want to see obviously Cody get his due. I think that's, what's going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that just to see how these two guys are going to get in there and do it. You know, I'm, I, I'm more, I'm more coming at this as like a student of the game in the sense where I'm not rooting for either guy. I'm more rooting for Cody. Let's just be honest. As you can see back there. Right. You know, 
Um, I, I'm a I'm a Rhodes fan, but uh, I'm I'm I know that those two, the consummate professionals that they both are, that's going to be the that that's going to have a build, that's going to have a story that's got to be told, and I really feel like it's either going to be the shits. <laughs> Or it's going to be one of the best things that I've ever seen. It can go either way. Uh, I, but I, it's not going to be like, ah, that was okay. It's going to be the shits. Or it's going to be like one of those where you're going, fuck, dude. Did you see the Cody Roman match? This might be the first match where they legitimately built somebody up to make me feel like they could beat Roman Reigns. In all honesty. Oh, I agree. So, so I'm, Yeah. I think they've done a poor job of that. And then, you know, on the flip side, the Raw after Mania and going forward, I'm a little bit worried with if Cody, they put the belt on Cody, who's going to be his his big rival? I mean, every great champ needs to have a great rival. And if you listen to the dirt sheets or whatever on the internet and Roman takes time off, there's nobody on that roster that, once again, makes me believe, you know, they could challenge Cody Rhodes right now. I think there's a few guys, but, um, you know, I think it would be interesting to see how, like, a Sami Zayn fits in that picture. It'd be interesting to see how, I mean, I don't know if they do that because it's like they're two big baby faces, but, um, you know, the Usos, I mean, they could they could break up that team like they've wanted to for forever. I mean, you know, that could be, you know, something that happens, a Brock Lesnar maybe um if he wants to work but uh you know there's a few a few matches on there like i'm a i love the viking raiders right so i'm a huge viking raiders fan i love that tag team i love their whole presence their persona their pagan shit that they're doing i don't even know if people are even picking up on it but like there's like a lot of these like little ritual stuff that they're doing and they're doing it pretty fucking close and uh or you know on point and that's one of the things that I wanted to kind of concentrate on talking about this, you know, WrestleMania stuff is like, you know, the really cool stuff that I see that are, that is happening in the WWE that's, that needs a more of a focal point on it is the stuff that the Viking Raiders are doing because it is a production. It is something that the house of black are trying to do. Right. But they don't have the, it's like, well, they are doing it. I shouldn't take, I shouldn't say that they aren't doing it. Because they are, and it's very cool, and it's one of the reasons why I liked watching the House of Black. But like, on the flip side of it, the Viking Raiders with the woman element, and then she's just as like pagan as the other. You know, you know, what I mean, it's like yeah. I'm loving that whole thing. Um, I think um, the uh, and it's also part of your your heritage too, right? Exactly. So I can identify with that. Um, so I'm excited for that match and to see how they're going to do what they're going to do with them. Does that make sense? Like where they're going to. Yeah. Go. Uh, should Edge and Finn Balor close out one of the nights in the Hell in a Cell? Only the <sighs> second cage match in WrestleMania history, by the way. I, I would think that they should. I, I'm not really, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not really curious about that match. I feel like Edge was. You know, I know he started the thing, but it's like I feel like the feud's gone longer than he was actually a member of it, right? So it's like I I I'd like to close that chapter. Um, how that is presented, I don't think it should be in the middle of the card. I feel like they should give Finn and Edge the creative freedom to really make a moment, you know. And once again, when we talk about enjoying wrestlers kind of last run, this is you know a last run for Edge, and he said it many times and Good, bad, or indifferent, you, you don't get this back again, so enjoy it. Exactly. Uh, there, You know, it, the downside of this, there's a ton of matches on here I could give a rat's ass about. Brock Lesnar, Omos, Omos, yeah. I yeah. don't care about that match. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, Austin Theory, Cena, I don't really care about that. Okay, this is that's one of the matches I did want to talk about because I think this is very, very important how this is going to go down. Um, I'm really hoping Austin Theory wins this match. Now, will he? I, I think there's a good chance he will. A few things I love about Austin Theory. There's a few things I don't like about Austin Theory. I'm sure you have your opinions. 
I love this kid because I think he's the future. I think he's got everything. He's 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 the total package. Sorry, Lex, but he's the total package. Where he bothers me is uh, the stupid beard that needs to go. You, you don't look like more of a bad guy or an asshole with it. As a matter of fact, I feel like I take you less seriously because you look like a, a dumb gym rat hipster. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you don't intimidate me at all. Like you probably tie me up and put, make me a pretzel in real life, but I literally would not have a problem standing up to you. Like I would like Brock Lesnar. I'd be like, dude, I'm wrong out later. You know what I'm saying? Right. Austin theory. I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever, bro. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? So he, but if he just, it's going to take him some time to mold. I'm pretty sure this is kind of how they see him. I feel like a, a big win over John Cena would be the first, this, that would be the foundation that that would be like the, the steel reinforcement on the foundation that would say, okay, now we can build the house. Boy, we have just about the same opinion on him. I think he just, and I don't want to use the word grow up because the guy's a five tool player. We all can see it. Uh, my, my issue is he doesn't exude that confidence on the mic. He's good on the mic. He doesn't give me that Oh, did you hear what he just said? Or, oh my gosh, this guy's amazing. He has it all because when he gets on the mic, he gives me that frat boy feeling like I think he's going to gym tan laundry after he's done with this match or you know what I mean? Like, I don't see a guy that will legitimately get in the ring and beat the hell out of someone. Although he probably could. I just see a guy that's like, whatever, bro, I'm going to get in and maybe we'll go surfing or tan later. I don't want that out of my Austin theory. I want Austin Theory to take that next step. And I'd almost say, um, gosh, who are some, who's the one guy in AEW? Ricky Starks. I want him to have that Ricky Starks persona. And yes. And if, if he could just channel even a third of what Ricky Starks has, Austin Theory's just printing money for himself. Yeah. See, that's the thing. He, when he, when he tries to talk, talk like a, tough guy i feel like he does it more like a, a a a football jock you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like i don't take that seriously i just think oh you're a nerd like you know you know what i mean like i don't i'm not like yeah <laughs> or whatever you know that's these are the these are the little things that are going to get worked out with him i'm i'm sure of it i'm sure of it I hope it because I love him. I really honestly think that he's the future, you know, or one of those guys. He can be that superstar that the WWE needs. I don't think, I think Cody's still almost there. I don't think the belt, the winning of the belt is going to take him to that place. I think it's going to help him. I don't, but I don't think it's going to be like, you know, like this much movement. It's going to be like, eh, okay, that's that much movement, you know? Right. But, you know, I just feel like Austin Theory just needs to get that rough around the edges kind of thing. And it and it showed with John Cena because I felt like whether you like Cena or not, I felt like Cena ran circles around him in any time they were in the ring leading up to this WrestleMania 39 match where it took me a little bit out of it because I did not feel like Austin could at least hang with him promo-wise. Well, I feel like that's the WWE's own fault too, in a lot of ways, because the, they cookie cut a lot of these guys. That's the reason they have a, a formula of success for success. They think that they figured it out, which they haven't, because the problem is that the main component that they have to deal with is called personality. Now you can you cannot formulate for personality. You might be able to do that for a time. But at some point, that wrestler's got to take it and amplify it and double it or triple it or move it into something that's more him. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So but so I'm excited to see what happens with that. Uh, for for that, for those reasons, it's it's almost like a it's like a it's like a, 
a fifth grade school picture. Like it's not a big deal, but you know it's part of the of the growing up process. I agree. Uh, Gunther McIntyre, Sheamus, and her Continental Championship. See, this should be fucking Gunther and one other guy. It shouldn't be fucking. Ah, uh, it's like the one guy who can purely wrestle, who's literally the greatest wrestler on the WWE roster right now. Who's Gunther? I mean, literally, hands down, is the only reason why I tune into the program that he's on. Straight mm -hmm. up. It's just so I can maybe catch a glimpse. Um, he's probably the greatest intercontinental champion, I think, that we've had in 20 fucking years, if not more. Um, I feel like uh, it should be, I don't, I don't, I'm over Drew McIntyre. I wish he would go away for a while. He needs to just go away. Um, yeah, so I'm not really, I, it should be Gunther and one other guy. And it should be a wrestling expose. I I agree because when I look in this match and uh, you know think Gunther versus Sheamus, I think physical. You know they're going to come out all welted up and bruised. But then I think sports entertainer McIntyre, which will get way more credit than he deserves for his part in this match, where everybody will be like, it was so brutal. And McIntyre will do his his sports entertainment thing while those two guys will beat the crap out of each other. And at the end of the day, Sheamus won't get the recognition recognition he deserves in that match. Gunther and McIntyre will both be like, oh, those guys put on a clinic. I'd much rather see Gunther and Edge and Hell in the Cell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wow, yeah. I, I That's so so much more interesting to me because you're talking about, you know, both are, 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 are fucking the highest level. Gunther's more of that, like, Arn Anderson, you know, technical, but he has, he oozes charisma. And then you got Edge, who's known for these ladder matches and these highs. It would be like, Bringing it, bringing that into Edge's world. Does that make sense? Absolutely. He's close. He's so. I would much rather see that kind of matchmaking done, because that's to me what, what would make make me buy it. You know, mm -hmm. but so I feel like they're wasting their time. That's like it's almost like a waste match, because you... I'm not a fan of, fan of Sheamus at all. At all, it does. It, it's I I turn the channel when he's on. I really do. I can't I can't help it. I don't like him. You gave me a wrestling boner when you said Edge and Gunther, by the way. I thought, oh, my God, that would be so amazing in Hell in a Cell. But this is the reason why I feel like these kinds of matches, when you think about the guy that you want, your intercontinental champion, right? And I understand, or even Gunther and Finn Balor, that's more interesting to me. You know, I feel like Gunther in any kind of big position, but to have him in Sheamus and McIntyre, it's like, I feel like you're wasting a match. I feel like if you've got... It's kind of like Dustin Rhodes should be at some point the AEW champion. At some point, give this guy the fucking belt. You know what I mean? And I understand they're riding high with MJF. I totally get it. Then get him in a program with MJF. Bring him back down to that. You know, you want a real fucking cowboy gimmick? Quit fucking around with Hangman. Do Dustin again. Let him go fucking right off into the sunset. I don't know. It's just so many things that I wish would happen i don't want to be a booker either but um i just these are certain things that i would like to see you, as a fan i will say this uh gunther mcintyre sheamus great for a backlash pay-per-view fine go do it 100 percent. but 100%. this is your biggest pay-per-view of the year why and look i get i get finn and edge fine but it, this is edge's last this could be edge's last wrestlemania and i'm not trying to be like that wrestle it could be it but he said it many times he doesn't know how much time he has left i would love to see edge versus uh, you know a gunther for the intercontinental championship at his last wrestlemania put a gunther win over edge would put gunther on that main event level that's what I'm trying to say. And, and see, this is the thing. It's like there's no, there's maybe a few, but there's no superstar. Like, okay, here's the thing. And this wasn't said by me. This was actually pointed out by a friend of mine who's a casual wrestling fan. He's watched it when he was a kid. He's sort of off and on. He doesn't follow it religiously like we do, right? He said, I feel like there's no actual real superstars in wrestling anymore. And I said, and I never really thought about that like that because I'm just a wrestling fan. So I don't really give a fuck if they're on late night talk shows or not. So 
I started to kind of think about it. And I was like, well, who's the guy or the gal or who's. And I was thinking about the attitude era. I was thinking about like, you know, sort of the afterwards, like 2011, 2012. Like there was people always in that company that transcended the wrestling thing. Whether it was The Rock, John Cena, CM Punk, Stone Cold, fucking, you know, the list can go on and on and on. Even think about their tag teams, the Hardy Boys, the Dudleys, you know, these guys, they transcended, they were bigger, you know, in a lot of ways. And there's really not that guy right now. And I feel like they, you know, but there is people who are close to that, but there isn't that one that's over the edge. And, and I started thinking about the point he was trying to make. And I was like, well, fuck, how do they go back to doing that? Because they would really make one like somebody like that every couple of years. Think about yeah. it. Even Batista. The guy, the guy was there for a cup of coffee. He's not one of the greatest of all times. I'm sorry, he's not. Mm. He was injury prone and he was barely there when he was there. And... You know, he, I mean, what did he start? He started with uh, one of the Tudleys, right? Wasn't he? He was a bodyguard. That's right. And then he got into evolution and that's kind of, you know, he was that, that, you know, yeah. the rub, he got the rub, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from him, but. Uh, and who has a belly button tattoo, by the way, come on. Yeah. I can't take any wrestler with a little sunshine around this belly button as a badass, I'm sorry. Well, you know what? It teaches own. <laughs> I'm not talking shit about him. <laughs> oh, you just you you put me on that raft and was like, "Bye, Dennis. Have fun." Oh, not, but I mean, but I, you know, I, I, I just that's. I was thing. along with you for that ride, and I went to turn around and be like, "Hey, Lars, we got him this time," and you're back on shore going, "Fuck you." <laughs> All right, listen, is there anything else we want to touch on before we wrap this thing up? Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair. I know we talked a little bit about it, um, but this is the one of the matches that of that I when it was made, I think it was one of the first ones that was made. I was like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. You know, what I mean, this is gonna be good. Because now it's the return match, right? I'm a Rhea Ripley fan fucking fan i think she's incredible yep so um i want to see her win and i want to see uh a great match and i know that those two will fucking deliver i'm gonna ask you a hard question because we yep. know roman closes out night one or two of wrestlemania you had to pick one hell in the cell ripley flair close out night whatever i'd go ripley ripley flair but I, I, well, no, actually, hold on. Let me think about this. Because it's See, tough. The, You'd no, have to the, the hell in the cell. The hell in the cell has to be the closer. Because no matter what you do, that's the thing. If you put the hell in the cell in the middle or close to the end, then you have to follow it. And I would not want to follow Edge and not with Ed. No way. Edge has got to be the, the main event. And you have to think of the importance of that match now. It no longer has a whole pay-per-view built around it. It's a standalone match, and you want it right. to be a scary, uh, you know, big-time filling match. That's the only I, way it has to close it out. And I think it would be better if I was Rhea and if I was Charlotte, I wouldn't want to headline it. I'd want to go on right before it because I know that that's the, the slot where you can steal the show. Absolutely. And I, and, I th and I think that no matter what night that they're on, I'm going to have to say that they probably will, or it'll be as equal. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. it'll be just as talked about as whatever blah, blah, blah is, you know? And, and I think that they are planning on putting on a massive show for everybody out there. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, dude, it's not, it, that's not, it's, it's just, it's just not, there's no way that that cannot be good. I agree. All right, listen, enjoy your WrestleMania week. What do you have planned this week? Any big news? Anything nothing, big? Nothing really big. I'm I'm uh just doing what, what I normally do. Eh, don't want to go there. But uh, you know, yeah, everything's good. 
All right. Hey, enjoy your WrestleMania weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching the Wrestling Perspective. Make sure you rate, subscribe, tell your friends. Go tell your friends. Help us grow. And if you're watching us on Fightful, listen, I know you're subscribed. I know you're happy. But go over to our place. Watch a few of our old interviews. We had a amazing cast of characters doing a show at one point. They've all moved on to better things. Not as good as us, but other things. So go over there. Watch some of our old episodes. We have... 300 plus old stuff to go back. I mean, we're like the network minus the pomp and circumstance. So uh, go enjoy it. Watch LA night when he was a co-host for a hot minute. So uh, wrestling perspective, Lars, Dennis, enjoy WrestleMania week. Have a good night, everybody.